checks is done at H0 minus 7 seconds. The last checks are performed, and uh, at step 3, we have the full thrust, which is reached at H0 and which now enables liftoff. There goes the gantry. We are ready to go. Watch for that. At minus three seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase, full throttle for liftoff. The DDO will call out the final 10 seconds. We'll let you watch and be back once Soyuz has begun her mission. Début de la séquence allumage lanceur. Largage VKM. Allumage lanceur. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Beautiful. Soy is lifting off perfectly from French Guyana, beginning her 1781st mission and her second here. Some beautiful shots coming up through the clouds. It's been Good raining. Nominal. It's been raining all week, but the sky's cleared for liftoff tonight, giving us a fine, fine view of things. DDO says all is well on board. 313 tons at liftoff. That's less than half the mass of the Ariane 5, but remember, Soyuz is complementary, not a competitor to Ariane 5. Lifting six satellites tonight, a total payload weighing 2.1 tons. Ariane 5 can lift roughly a four or five times that much, but the boosters are the first stage. That's another difference between Soyuz and Ariane. Yeah, the strap-on boosters and the central core burn together in this first phase of flight. Uh, the four strap-on boosters, as you could see, are the four tapered cylinders around the central core, each equipped with a RD-107A engine burning liquid oxygen and kerosene. The thrust is transferred to the rest of the launch vehicle through ball joints, which are located at the top of the cone-shaped part of the boosters, each being attached to the central core by two rear struts, which break at separation once the predefined velocity has been reached. Tell us uh, something else about the central core. That's also the second stage, right? Yes, and it uses a slightly different engine, the RD-108A, but it also burns liquid oxygen and kerosene, and it is reinforced on its upper curve at the interface with the strap-on boosters booster. to carry the loads right by the latter, and the DDO just announced that the boosters was, uh, were properly uh, separated. This is what uh, happens up there. I think you saw that on the screen there. 47 uh, <clears throat> meters of altitude, roughly. Can you give us an explanation of the curve on the upper left-hand of the screen? Yeah, the, uh, actually the top left is uh, velocity versus uh, distance on ground, and the bottom left uh, provides you with the sight angle, indicating uh, the direction followed by the vehicle in degrees, the altitude in kilometer, and the velocity in kilometers per second. So our altitude now 77 and climbing our speed to 2 kilometers per second. We're coming up to the next milestone jettison of the fairing. The fairing consists of two half shells, which should provide protection for the payloads during liftoff, like Ariane 5. Weighs 1,700 kilos, measures 4 meters by 11. The DDO says everything is fine on board. Yes, the fairing is the ST large fairing tonight, by opposition to the S small fairing, which used to be the baseline for the first Soyuz frigate flights in Baikonur. It was uh, decided uh, a few years ago to award CSKB Progress with a contract to develop the ST fairing to accommodate larger payloads, and this was made possible by the introduction of the digital control system on the Soyuz vehicle, as the former analog control system was not able to control Soyuz with such large fairing and subsequent increased aerodynamic forces on the upper part. The fairing built by TSSKB Progress at the Samara Space Center, which also designs and develops the first three stages. The satellite's going to three different orbits tonight, three different altitudes. We have the announcement. The, uh, there's the, the fairing separation. separation. Yeah. You see how that, there's pyrotechnic cords blowing the fairing away, getting rid of the 1,700 kilos that we don't need anymore. That's the reason why we jettison the fairing now? Uh, the reason is that at this altitude, uh, the air density in the atmosphere is very low, and therefore the aerothermal flux on the launch vehicle is considered low enough to remove the fairing, which was initially used to protect the satellites against heat and against contamination. Of course, as soon as part of the launch vehicle uh, 
any part of the launch vehicle becomes useless, it should be jettisoned. And, uh, and this should be made uh, also knowing that the fall-down areas are such normal. that no property damage, no bodily injury will be caused by the debris on Earth. You can see the satellites, uh, the top satellite, Playette, exposed, and the four uh, leases underneath. Coming upon the separation of the second and third stage, a particularity of the Soyuz, whereas with Ariane we separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage, Soyuz does just the opposite. Third stage is ignited two seconds before separation of the lower stage, the second stage. The lower part of the third stage, called the skirt, is used to channel the flux of this third stage motor ignition down toward the stage below, where it rebounds, which gives an added thrust, assisting separation. And the third stage skirt is then separated 30 seconds later. We should be hearing uh, confirmation. Allumage du bloc I. There we go. Oui. Blo Separation bloc à bloc I. Bloc E is also another bloc term. Bloc E is the third the, stage. Yes. The third the stage. Same. So the third stage has been de la jupe arrière du bloc I. ignited, and the uh, second stage has been burned out and separated, occurring right on time. Separation of the skirt 30 seconds later comes at a roughly 173 kilometers, about half a minute. She climbs six kilometers. More of the mission in a minute. Right now, the latest news from Ariane Space. The last area.